the the process of science has changed somewhat over the course of our lives to uh, so that there's there's like this additional not everybody does this but uh, a lot of people believe in in open science as a way of saying like we're going to publish our work uh, as a, as a public good as a service to open public source. to public conversation mm -hmm. and then you know it's going to go through the process of peer review still but like more work is being done than can possibly be peer reviewed and so like you get into these things um, I wrote this paper about this in in 2020 about how do you you know how do you make sense of this stuff now like so like this was about covid mm -hmm. and how uh, the problem that scientific institutions got into with the public during COVID was that, you know, people have been kind of trained to believe that science is this sort of, you know, fixed point, like that, yes. that that's, that there's an orthodoxy yes. and there, I mean, it's, it's not just a free for all. It's so not. Science is a broad but, term. Yeah. Right. Like science, you keep, like, Right. They trust the science. We, we, we're the scientists. We are, you know, the, the people in the ivory tower who have studied this our whole lives and have the credentials to tell you what to do. There's a, there's a sort of a mightier than thou sort of vibe. Well, I mean, the, 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 it really is like all science, you know, all knowledge, you know, you can kind of trace it around a circle of, you know, an observation that starts from personal experience and then is, you know, you ask a friend to, you know, hey, like stand here and look at this and tell me what you see. And they see the same thing, then that intersubjective validation, you know, I thou validation yeah. is more robust yes. than just I saw a UFO or whatever. And then, uh, but, <laughs> but then like maybe the two of you grew up in the same house. Right. And so you're biased in the same way, yes. you, you know, and so you, then you know, science, as most people understand it, is this third person validation where you bring in somebody from a completely different set of experiences and they're going to, you know, you try to find, you stress test these claims as hard as you can, mm -hmm. but there is no fundamental, there's no moment where you have, you know, like the, the replication crisis going right on, going on right now in psychology and in pharmacological medicine has a lot to do with um, the fact that the, the mechanical like, the, you know, the action of different, uh, you know, psychoactive or, uh, you know, different medical f things have so much to do with expectation and the placebo effect and so on that uh, you can run the experiments 20 years later and get different results because the, the culture has changed. Right. And so people's expectations have changed. And like the way that there's a there's a famous a uh, set of psychological experiments done by Daryl Bem, mm. who uh, called Feeling the Future. Let's see. Uh, so Daryl reversed the time series on all of these famous psychology experiments. I think nine famous psychology experiments. And this this piece is him basically saying, uh, we, we took for granted that the past comes before the future. But if you reverse the order of these experiments, you can see that people are, like you get results that are as statistically significant. Um, if you have them, you know, select something before they actually see the slide or whatever. So he was saying like, look, according to your own standards, uh, the field of psychology needs to admit that we are, we have some sort of precognitive ability and people went insane over this paper. And it was the result of an ongoing debate in psycho in clinical psychology um, or in, in experimental psychology mm. about whether the discipline itself is flawed or whether we like, you know, like a lot of people claimed that he was burying negative results and a lot of people reproduced his work, but then denied that they had. And it's just a, it's a complete mess in there. And so like when, when, you know, this, this issue of, um, it's not that science is broken. It's that science itself continues to evolve and we get more and more nuanced about the way that we structure our experiments and the way that we validate the way we understand the statistical, support for a, a given phenomenon. And then also, you know, um, Max Planck is famous for saying that science proceeds one death at a time or one funeral at a time because people get so stuck in their thinking that they deny 
the validity of anomalous evidence, and they need to be replaced by younger researchers with mm. fresh eyes. And it's so corruptible as well. I mean, everything is. I mean, like I don't want to single science out here as a, because there is a problem generally. I interviewed uh, Teen Wen, a University of Utah philosopher, mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, and uh, whoop, let's see, where is this? Oh, that's on Substack. Um, yeah, T. Nguyen and I had a really interesting conversation about expert identification and how uh, basically, like, if you're not an expert in a field, then you can't actually validate what an expert is saying. And the amount of time it takes to develop expertise is always longer than the amount of time that you have to communicate something, you know, like a complex idea. Right. Um, and so it's not just climate scientists versus everyone else. It's also, uh, you know, uh, geopolitical experts versus everyone else. It's mm -hmm. also plumbers versus everyone else. It's like there are, there are, an, a, you know, kind of a, an unspecified, you know, kind of theoretically infinite number of things that you can be an expert in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and as knowledge becomes more and more developed, as our body of knowledge becomes more developed, then the amount of time it takes to learn some of these fields uh, means that like there are more kinds of expertise. It takes longer to acquire that expertise. And so we're, we're on the surface of this like growing volume of information mm -hmm. that's, that is, you know, with these major information technology revolutions like printing press or the internet, we have to, we, we, we hit these periodic uh, crises in being able to understand how to uh, how to articulate the knowledge and like bring it together and like unify it, um, and so Simon Dedeo, um, uh, a Carnegie Mellon professor I interviewed years ago for Complexity, talks about this. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, this is a fantastic talk he gave years ago. Oh, wait, not this one. Um, super theories. Tadeo Consilience. He he uh, he gave a talk. Yeah, here we go. Super theories and consilience from alchemy to electromagnetism, looking over the history of the proceedings of the Royal Society, the, the oldest scientific journal, mm -hmm. and running a statistical analysis on this body of of data that showed that every let me see every hundred and fifty years or so uh, we go through this wave where knowledge, let me see, I think this is it. Yeah, so you can see these, these spikes in the confidence of, this is a mutual information in bits, is the linkage between different disciplines in science. And uh, so we go through these things, we're about 100 years, we get more and more unified in our scientific understanding. So like you can see, where electro, uh, the study of electricity and the study of magnetism mm -hmm. uh, ends up becoming the study of electromagnetics. You know, it's like it becomes one discipline. And then, um, and then there's a 50-year gap where suddenly uh, that, that innovation in scientific thinking generates so much new insight that we lose the plot. And right. so we're in one of these right now where the successes of the scientific endeavor have given us so much more to consider now that we don't know how to fit it all together. And we're going to go through another couple of decades before it starts making sense again. Um, but it's not, it's not a crisis in terms of like what science is and it's not a crisis that's unique to the academy or uh, to any other in specific institution that deals with, you know, like it's not a crisis unique to journalism um, this is something that happens with every new institution and within 150 years, whatever institutions we come up with now to unify the knowledge produced by the internet will be in crisis again, and we'll have to come up with some new system, but science will persist. Science will continue to evolve and, and become more and more, uh, effective and capable of making sense of things. It just won't be science like most people think of it now. Yeah, it, it seems like there's got to be, like, it, like there's got to be something else, like another way to, to like everything can't just be weighed and measured in a lab, right? Like, there's this is one of the things I was talking to, uh, 
Andy Jacobson about a couple of weeks ago when she wrote this book uh, called The Phenomena. And she was explaining that some of these precognitive ESP um, abilities that people have, they, they can't be duplicated and they can't be weighed and they can't be measured. And there's this huge divide and there's this there's this clash that goes on between um the the phenomena and the scientific method right because they they just don't mix and and you can't yeah. duplicate any of this stuff but it's a it's very much a real thing and this is something i was also talking to jack sarfati about a little bit um yeah. <laughs> he's like these people who was i asking him i think i was asking i was asking about some somebody who was coming in uh who was like skeptical about the whole ufo phenomenon i'm like and jack you know obviously he's got his opinions yeah, he's like, he, he was a, like i'll fight them these people are fucking idiots danny they're fucking idiots i know this shit because i've seen it it exists okay just because yeah. you can't fucking weigh it and put it in a beaker doesn't mean it's not real Totally. Well, I mean, so so my graduate advisor, I ended up going to grad school for a little bit and then dropping out because, uh, you know, life. But the um, my graduate advisor, Sean Espiern Hargens, worked with the uh, American integral philosopher Ken Wilber on this, uh, what he called integral methodological pluralism, which is an attempt to take postmodern philosophy where we recognize that that uh, even our empirical investigations of the world are constrained by our language and that uh, there is no way for us to know something with total absolute objectivity, you know, because like we all kind of live in a virtual reality, yes, you know, this, yes. this kind of like our brain is generating this thing based on experience. And, everything. You know, I talk about this all the time yeah. with people that I have in here who like to talk about everything. And it's like, you, you haven't been to this part of the world and seen what's happened here. You can read news articles and watch YouTube. So do I, I do the same yeah. thing. Like there's like, uh, what, one of the things that really fucking frustrates me about some people is that people like to talk about things as if they are like absolute fucking fact and they know it. And these people, their job is to know stuff, obviously, but all they do is they read stuff that other people write, that those people got from somebody else or something else that they read or that they saw. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, so that's the thing is that, like, as, um, you know, even the most rational person has to base some of their behavior in the world on expert claims made by other people that they can't directly validate. Yes. You know, and that this doesn't mean that it's a, it's a, an ontological free for all. Like it doesn't mean that like there isn't, you know, that we can't approach truth and that there aren't some people that see certain truths more clearly than other people. And so like, it's important to be clear about that. But what it does mean is that we need to be more humble about what we, you know, like the things that we are taking for granted on the, you know, on the basis of belief, because we don't have the time or the unlimited energy to sit there and scrutinize everything everyone ever tells us. Right. 